So Tyrese Halliburton, he said last week that he's tired of being a loser. Well, uh, safe to say he took matters into his own hands, Chanae, last night. In case anyone missed one of the most exciting offenses in basketball in action, here is what happened in this in-season tournament knockout game. It was all Tyrese Halliburton. I mean, what, the, the, the passing, too. Yeah, I mean, just the ability to have the intuition to find his teammates. Leads the NBA in assists per game at 12, 11.9 to be exact. And that was a beautiful one with the no-look. Yeah, I mean, how many no-look passes does he have? Too. And then Halliburton again. By the way, that's Drew Holiday with the closeout. I mean, come on now. What he was doing, being able to knock down the threes off of the dribble, that's what gets him going with the confidence and his finishing at the rim is sensational. Oh, crafty there, too. Halliburton. Come on. And oh, block. this is blocked. He gets his own missed shot, though. So with every play, I got more and more hype because you can tell this in season tournament matters for opportunities for teams like the Pacers. The third quarter was key for the Pacers. They outscored the Celtics by 14. Then, fourth quarter here four to play. Halliburton hits that three over Holiday. Again, his parents, his girlfriend hyped for that one. Yeah, I loved it. He was like, look at the back of the jersey. That's my son. But this was a close one. But again, Halliburton, people talk about his release. It's a little different. I think it catches his defenders off guard because shots like this, come on. Four point play sparks a 9-0 run for the Pacers, by the way. So going ahead here. That's what I'm talking about. As his family is cheering. <laughs> under a minute left to go. Forcing the turnover. Pacers get out in transition. Halliburton, Aaron Naismith for the exclamation Icing point. Icing on the cake. The Pacers win 122-112. Halliburton, 26 points, 13 assists, 10 rebounds, first career triple-double. Here he is after the game. <laughs> I was doing an awful job in the first half. I was getting attacked. Couldn't breathe. Had to hit an inhaler at halftime, but... Uh, you know, I figured it out. Team figured it out. I had a lot of support behind me, and the coaching staff did a great job drawing some, some different things up to give them different looks, and we were able to get the win tonight. Vegas, baby. Pull up to Vegas if you want to see a show. The, Ty the, the Tyrese Halliburton show. Himmelburton. <laughs> the Tyrese Himmelburton show. I love it, the Tyrese Himmelburton show. Sure, <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that one. And then Tyrese Halliburton, after that interview where he said they had bigger goals than just this win, that he wouldn't be satisfied, took to social media, doubled down. He said that we are not done yet. Hashtag boom, baby. So I was saying that every once in a while, I'm like, you know what? I should have been in Indiana last night. That looked like the place to be. That's what you know, We don't say that all that often. <laughs> what did you see from Tyrese Halliburton that made that the case? I've waited my whole life to say something like this. The Indiana Pacers, they lead the NBA in pace. And I love that because that works to Wait. his advantage. But, but I tried to tell you guys. No one wanted to listen. When I said that my name was Rizard Rafferson, it's because I just embody a lot of different things. And look. What just happened Riz, here? Just, just, just stay with me here because this has been my thing. I have always been the director of Omnions for the in-season tournament, and I want to officially congratulate the Indiana Pacers oh. and Hemerson. And so let me just let you guys know, because it came out, Oxford, we had a long conversation of how we were going to detail the word and how we we're going to lay it out. Do you guys really think it was a coincidence that they named this a week before the in-season tournament? Do you guys really think that that's just a coincidence, or do you think I had a little something to do with it? I won't tell anybody the truth. But here we go. Riz, look, it's a definition. We don't need to go into the Gen Z. It's just slang for style, for charm. For charisma. You know what I'm saying? Congratulations on the wedding, too. Can't wait to meet him. Listen, at I'm the waiting end of the day, we are very, very excited. And let me explain to you why Tyrese Halliburton is him a burden. Because the man is just special. He did everything <laughs> that he was supposed to do to really put on the show. And let me show you this, too. This man can drive to the basket and do anything. You see it with the left hand finish. He can go get this. is one of the best perimeter defenders in the freaking world. Watch him get him on IT, spun him around. And then he knocks down a three in his face. Then here, just the shot creation. He's like Jason Kidd. Mm -hmm. He's like Steve Nash. He gets other people involved. That's why he's leading the league in assists. And when I tell you that this man is special, he is different, this is part of the reason why people said it was a travesty when he got traded from Sacramento because people could see how special this man was going to be. That so, is yes, true. is he going to be the first person there in Vegas you know with what? me? Oh, we got it going on. I when can't wait. When we talk wait. about that move, I did say you don't want to make a Halliburton-esque mistake. Ooh. That was another word, but let me go in there because those numbers he put up, I mean, that's elite, elite. category. Elite, elite, elite. Celtics really lose when Tatum and Brown both score 30. 
Last night, though, no. they did, and they dropped to 22 and 2 in their careers when they both hit that mark. So let's bring Zach Lowe back into this conversation. Zach, are we ready to chalk this up? How bad of a loss was this for the Celtics? Where do you fall on this one? Eh, let's flush it and move on. 12 of 41 from three. That's a really bad shooting game. No poor Zingas. And if there's a red flag that's raised by this, it's that they really need him to be healthy. It just changes the entire look and feel of their offense and their spacing. And that's been sort of the one flaw in his career is that he's never healthy. But that game last night was about Tyrese Halliburton and the Pacers. And the list of better offensive players than Tyrese Halliburton is getting shorter and shorter every single day and it might not get beyond one hand at this point but for Boston you just move on to the next one move on to the next one Shanae what's the biggest issue you saw no I think that if I am a member of the Boston Celtics that one really hurts because I had them picked as the team for me to win the in-season tournament and every time we feel like we have these great expectations it's like there's a circumstance there's a circumstance that gets in the way they're second in the NBA and made threes but they take the second most amount of threes they had 18 turnovers they're missing Porzingis their excuses turnovers there. Were, were bad but nonetheless their excuse is there but the reality is is every time we feel close to seeing like all right the Celtics are ready to be that team yeah this is the MVP season something happens and this is just one of those things that adds to that box right that you want to forget it's not in, in a vacuum this one game it that's not what makes you say oh okay it's the fact that this seems to happen over and over again just when you're ready to anoint the Celtics well and I think if there were problems that we were seeing consistently I won't look at this one game and say, oh, this is who they are, who they've been. Like Zach says, once you get Przingis, that spacing on the court is so much different. Everyone becomes more efficient and you have another shooter. The turnovers were a problem. That was, But the reason why it was a problem yeah. is because you're going against one of the most high-powered offenses. Yep. And they were at home. So the energy in that crowd was a playoff game. Not like a playoff oh, game. It was awesome. It was a playoff game. So you get that. So if I were to look at this and the Celtics were to play them in the first round, I would still pick the Celtics to win 4-2. Fine, but look at this stat. Zach, you said last week that the Celtics are dangerously close to having a Jalen Brown problem. <laughs> uh, does that stat do anything to move the needle away or toward that issue? No, I think he's actually been playing well in those two games. It was really that Charlotte game from a couple of weeks ago that kept a number of games where his shot selection was a little bit puzzling. I think his quality of play since then has been good. His decision making has been good. Those stats don't bother me at all. I just watch his shot selection process. It's been fine to me. Well, and I agree. You're talking about 14 of uh, 14 of 23. Like that is efficient. Like it's different. The three turnovers really not that bad when you talk about someone that handles the ball. But one thing that I had never heard of and then Joe Missoula talked about they track field goal assist uh, what they are no 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 they talk about assist attempts or like they offered opportunity assist opportunities so it's like he might be passing the ball and it, like it, let's say he passes yeah. five or six times and no one knocks down a shot yeah and it's like okay so it's really your your assist possibilities that's what they're looking at so just say he got zero assists in a game you have to really break down the film and say was he never yeah, right. passing the ball that wasn't the case some of these games are the ones you take the film from you really dig into some of them you just say you know what this just wasn't our best yeah. night and we're going to flush it in the Celtics we still all have the expectation that when it's all said and done they're He's, the team still there. They're the team in the East that at least I have the most confidence in looking around. It's time now for setting the pick brought to you by ESPN Bet, the official sports book of ESPN. The Knicks and the Bucks. It's a rematch of both teams' first in-season tournament game that was back on November 3rd. Also in Milwaukee, the Bucks, they won that 110-105. That's despite 45 from Jalen Brunson. The Knicks have been hot, though, since that loss, winning eight of their last 11. So I ask you, Richard Jefferson, who you got? Look, I, I got Milwaukee, but this is the thing about the about the Knicks that scare me. They they do remind me of the Miami Heat. They're a team that even if they don't shoot the ball well, they're just going to be gritty and they're going to fight and they're one of the best rebounding teams in the league and they will turn it into an ugly game. And then you get into the last five minutes and yeah. Brunson is as good as anybody, in my opinion, in the last five minutes. He can hit tough shots. He can take them to the end. I still think it's Milwaukee. Okay. But, the but that's your explanation. Me. But Nick scared me. Okay. I think it's Milwaukee as well. Giannis coming off of his first triple-double of the season. I feel like he's coming back home. He's home, and now he's going to want to continue that same energy. But I'm with you, Richard, because you know what that Pacers lo you know, win did? What? Teams around the league are like, you're telling me we have a chance. Like mm. We can really catch lightning in a bottle. It that motivates, but it also it also can be a reminder to, I guess you can say, more expected teams like the Bucks to be like, we can't let that right. happen to mm -hmm. us. We're all taking notes as players in the association. Right. 
and you get motivated by seeing some of these re results ahead of time. Zach, where do you fall on this one? I'm going Bucks. They're at home. I feel like they've heard the noise about the Knicks or the Cinderella team in the play-in. They're tough. They're gritty. Yeah. And the Knicks are really, really good. I feel like the Bucks are going to come out and give a really strong performance. And everyone's been nitpicking them, and justifiably so. They've played, have been, had a very uneven season, up and down, weird decisions across the roster. I'm going Bucks. I'm going Bucks as well, but I've been 0 for 2 on my picks thus far. So uh, whether or not you want to ride with me, I, I will leave that up to everyone who's watching at home. Zach, if the Knicks are going to get one over the Bucks tonight, what are they going to need to do? I think another big game from Jalen Brunson. The Bucks uh, perimeter defense has been an Achilles heel for them all season. Guards are lighting them up left and right. So big Jalen Brunson game and bench minutes. The Knicks are one of the deepest, toughest teams in the league. They just come at you in waves of players, and that's a weakness for the Bucks, the depth. So I want to see the Knicks, Emmanuel quickly, Josh Hart, DiVincenzo, all those guys come in and change the game. Then the Knicks can really flip this game their way. Absolutely. So all four of us went with Milwaukee, but who are you picking? Get the ESPN bet app and you can get started. New customers get $200 in bonus bets once they've placed their first sportsbook bet with ESPN bet. More in-season tournament action this Thursday. The semifinals in Las Vegas. NBA Countdown is going to get you set for the matchup starting at 4 Eastern with tip at 5. You can see all the action on ESPN and the app.